My name is Alex William Smith by birth. These days I'm better known as Jonathan Ryle Hypnotist. I was formerly known as magician Alex Leroy. In 1998 I set out to expose the dishonest uh, activities of Baza Mahmood. Unfortunately this backfired landing me in prison as explained at circusofthemind.net. I became very much a victim of Maza Mahmood the fake sheikh and in the past couple of years um, it's come to light the proof and evidence that he hacked my phone, used unlawful information gathering and that he drugged my drinks as well as what I already knew that he manipulated and intimidated behind the scenes through his associates and basically outright lied. What follows, there are some clips from either episode one or episode two or episode three of Amazon Prime's uh, documentary which released on the 26th of September 2023 called The Fake Shake. These clips are used under fair usage, copyright exemption and the fact that I'm giving a critical review of the content. Well, it's 26th of September 2023. Amazon Prime have dropped their three-part documentary, The Fake Shake. Just tried to find it on the television. I can't appear to find it. I'm going to go and try again in a minute, but I thought I'd come and check on the laptop. And it's showing that it's available on Amazon uh, on the laptop. And interestingly, I noticed the first thing I saw is that the image they're using is Mahmood arriving at court. And who's that looking at him? Yes, indeed, that's my ginger head. Um, short hair cut, it's me, outside the old bailey. Used on the uh, homepage there of Amazon. So I will watch it and then give a short review after, but it basically says this is the gripping story of maverick tabloid reporter Maza Mahmood, the king of the sting, playing the role of a wealthy Arab sheikh. He dupes models, royals and A-list stars with elaborate, elaborate undercover operations. He was at the top of British journalism for almost three decades, but then comes an extraordinary downfall. Mahmood becomes the front page story himself and the tables are turned. There's three episodes and it will be interesting to see how much of the research um, I published on my various blogs over the past 25 years they actually go into detail about. So, episode one of The Fake Shake, Amazon Prime. Maverick reporter Maza Mahmood tries to make a name for himself in the cutthroat work of, or rather world, of tabloid journalism. He pauses as a hitman and exposes a respected doctor who wants his mistress dead. But what Mahmood really wants is a huge scoop. He devises an audacious undercover operation, pausing as a jet-setting Arab sheikh with a playboy lifestyle to expose the misdemeanours of two football tycoons. Let's see what happens. Straight away a disclaimer. This series includes dramatic reconstruction based on witness accounts. Some events and characters have been modified or combined. This is a three-part series and each episode's content should be viewed and understood in the context of the entire series. So if some events have been combined, it's not 100%, I'm going to guess, 100% add reality or different reality items put together for dramatic reconstruction. That's what it seems to indicate. Episode 1 is 48 minutes and 43 Second long. Informing me that I was going to be in the news of the world um, the following morning. Emma Morgan. On um, a drug scandal. And would I like to make any comments? I just... I think... I think I needed to sit down. In fact, I did. You knew their life was going to change and they knew too. So you almost felt sorry for them. Almost. Almost. Look at her. Ayla Fox, former News of the World. Almost. Hmm. Well. So like many shows these days, they actually have a bit of an interview with somebody who's going to be in it. And then it goes into the opening credits. And this is part way through. Reveled in hiding his identity. His anonymity. If you look very closely and carefully, I'm in that crowd outside the old Bailey. His secrecy was the key to his entire act. But 
um, I'm definitely, as it were, there. Outside the old Bailey. So if like many shows they have the same intro on all three, then King of the Sting turning up to court every day beneath a balaclava. Quite visible on the his identity. His anonymity, his secrecy was the key. The showing up bit. The self-styled King of the Sting. And there. Uh, British magician Alex Smith, a.k.a. Jonathan Royal, coming to see Madame Mood be sentenced at the Old Bailey in London. I was known this is interesting. The man who always delivers. So one night I get a call from a man calling himself Dr. Rangwani. He's a well-respected 62-year-old GP. Married family man with two daughters from Soli Hull in Birmingham. I'll so explain. That... There is a link on my site, circusofthemind.net, where it says go to my past 25 years of research. On that page with the 25 odd years of research, there is a link, well, various links to people who claimed that their drinks were drugged or spiked by Mazama Mood and or his associates and team on his instruction. One of those links goes to a story about a doctor, namely the doctor just mentioned, that used to be active, but apparently the page has disappeared, although it still appears if you put the link into Web Archive. It's there and it says, I was drug says doctor accused of murder plot. In this is quoted about the January 1998 sting, so that's a couple of months uh, before March and April 98, um, when the sting towards myself took place. And he says, I quote, I really do not have any recollection of going into the hotel room upstairs. I remember being offered another drink in the bar downstairs and I said I didn't want it, but someone poured it anyway. I think I must have taken something that blocked my memory. I can only come to the conclusion that I was given some drugs. I cannot possibly comment on the circumstances, the rest of the circumstances of the sting relating to that doctor. What I can say, though, it's yet another occasion, and there's numerous of them out there linked to on circusofthemind.net, where people have made the assertion that their drinks were drugged uh, by Mahmood. As a presumed, people would act on their prejudices. So Maz, very cleverly, tapped into the zeitgeist of the era. He realised he could play the race card as his ace card. Race card as the ace card. Well, indeed. Race card is the ace card from a man who apparently himself was racist. And if you go on Byline Investigates and search for October the 7th, 2016, headline, Fake Wife Blows Lid on Fake Shake, He Lived in a Fantasy World, and the first bit on there goes into Mahmood um, using the racist P word um, and, yeah, other derogatory racist comments and whatnot towards people. ...into journalism and tells you everything about Mazen Mahmood then and Mazen Mahmood throughout his journalism career. It was clear right from the start that Mazen Mahmood was prepared to do what it took even turn over family friends that he met at a family dinner who talked about conducting themselves in video piracy. He took that information to a news desk and they turned it into a story and suddenly he had an inroad into the world of journalism. Family friends turned over just so we can get a foot up the ladder. Interesting comment from Alia Fox initial video piracy story, Maz told me that his dad was absolutely incandescent with anger, threatened to throw him out of the house, said he'd blackened the family name. But Maz didn't care. 
It was all about the story, he got it, he was ruthless, and that's how he continued for the rest of his career. That's how he continued for the rest of his career. He didn't care, he just wanted a story. 1998, Newcastle United Football Club. got a tip off the chairman of the club, Freddie Shepherd, and the vice chairman, Doug Hall, presenting as respectable businessmen and family men who were flying out to Marbella after leaving the match, playing around all over town in seedy nightclubs. Let's not forget, both of them have made assertions that are in the public domain that they feel that their drinks were drugged and spiked, and as we know... One allegation like that on its own could just be, you know, conjecture, but the sheer volume of people who've uh, said the same, including during court cases, stacks up in favour of that being reality. Come on. But I tell you, he was ruthless. It's totally ruthless. And nothing would stop him. Absolutely nothing would stop him. So my mood was approached. New UK was approached. Neither of them uh, commented. Steve Grayson said he was ruthless. So I've just watched episode one of The Fake Shake, Amazon Prime. I'm not going to review it fully. Suffice to say, it only really covers the story of Emma Morgan, the former glamour model and actress, who ultimately in the BBC Panorama in 2014, Steve Grayson uh, stated that um, basically they were all parts of the supply chain. And that is also pointed out here, namely that uh, Emma would never have supplied drugs or been able to if they actually hadn't supplied the money and also the source for getting the stuff. If that sounds familiar, it's because I was told where to get coins from and they provided the money up front. It seems to be a modest operandi in uh, many of Mahmood's cases. During the show, we saw Alia Fox, former News of the World journalist, Emma Morgan, uh, the model and uh, actress, Neil Wallace, former executive at News of the World, Jodie Kidd was on briefly talking about her drugs uh, sting. Paul Samurai, a News of the World tipster, an ex-convict. Uh, Dr. Ragawani, there was footage of, who is the doctor who, who wanted to hire a hitman, but also sensationally, with his medical knowledge, claimed that he, he agreed the video footage was him, but that um, he didn't remember it being taken because... Um, some memories were missing because he believed he'd been drugged. Paul McMullen from the News of the World, Steve Burton, a News of the World photographer, Christine Hart, private investigator, uh, Brian Tuff, a security expert for um, the Newcastle di directors, which is one of the other main stories covered. Again, they're people who believe their drinks were spiked, causing them to be more likely to make the indiscretions that they did. And, of course, Steve Grayson, who's kindly given me a statement. But uh, I won't mention that just now because perhaps that may come out in episode two or three. Um, yeah, it's a good start. It will certainly make people want to watch part two. <laughs>